Hello, my name is Emmanuel Casa. I work at the Fast Track team within Microsoft. And today I'm going to be talking about the domain authentication in Dynamics 365 marketing and the importance that this represents for email deliverability. To begin with, it's important to understand that there's three key concepts when it comes to email deliverability. DMARC, which stands for Domain-Based Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance, is one of the protocols used in it. It's primarily deliver, uh, targeting organizations and the ability to control that their domain is properly used. So DMARC, think of it as the policy that start, allows you to define when certain servers or domains can send on your behalf. DKIM is kind of the counterpart to that in the sense that the, this is the domain key set interface email. Allow the receiver of those emails to understand if the email that they're receiving comes from a valid source by then identifying the domain. DKIM is going to basically verify that that domain has complied with a policy, that the email that are being received complies with the policies as specified in DMARC. And then finally we have SPF, which is a complementary part of DMARC, in which is also validating on behalf of the receiver, allows the receiver of the email to verify if the email that they're getting comes from a specific a valid domain by verifying the submitted IP address. So while DKIM focuses on emails, uh, SPF looks at IP addresses. How does that work eventually within Dynamics Marketing? So when, when you install Dynamics Marketing, you automatically get a validated domain as a particular format, which starts with a unique identifier uh, specified for your organization, and then the suffix din365marketing.com. This is to allow from the very beginning of provisioning of the organization that you can still send emails from on a verified domain. However, this is not necessarily going to be the most uh, efficient way to get a, a, a deliverable emails because your customers wouldn't be knowing that this is coming from you because this is an unrecognized domain from the point of view of users. So to increase the deliverability, we are not going to be confusing our emails with phishing attack. We recommend that people uh, they use a dom uh, sender address from a customer domain, something that you that identifies the company that's being sending this market communications, so that users and customers can understand that this is a valid and a legitimate email that they receive. However, if I just changed the email address and you said I was sent off from a particular email, it, the sent because the email is getting sent from the market wouldn't be recognized by the receiver they'll get a very low score from a deliverability perspective as they're not uh, as it's not authorized for the Microsoft service to send emails on behalf of a particular customer domain. We validate this by, the, by when you go into a particular email, if I were to specify a email at a different prom address, in this case, using my customer.com as a sender email address, this basically putting, uh, gives me a notification that says this is not an authenticated domain for my instance and it's going to uh, cause lower deliverability. Dynamics marketing will still try to deliver but it's likely that it's going to cause some issues on the receiver end and your emails are probably not going to get received. So how do we put all of those concepts together? So let's understand that Dynamics marketing utilizes a DKIM only as a means to authenticate with the receiver domains. We are currently uh, the, the SPF signature, which is specified in Dynamics Marketing, is, is from Dynamics Domain and is not for the customer's domain. This does not impact deliverability as the SPF signature that identifies our servers is only visible in the email header. So you will need to go into the source of the email to even see that there's this coming from the, the SPF authentication. However, the SPF validation is done so to ensure that the, the deliverability is high. We do plan to allow a, fe a feature in the future to allow you to provide your own domains for SPF signatures as well. What we do, do today is to authenticate a domain. The domain owner needs to specify a DMARC policy that allows the DKIM keys that, micro that are from Dynamics Marketing to be able to send on their behalf. The next question is how do we know which domain to authenticate? Dynamics Marketing supports the ability to enter multiple domains, authenticated domains that you can send on from, from within the uh, same instance. 
So you can define as many domains as you, as you need to, and you can also specify subdomains if that's what you prefer. However, when you're authenticating a domain, it's important to use the full domain address as it will appear in the return address. So taking emails, for example, a contoso.com, you need to identify the contoso.com. Equally, if you decide to use a subdomain, it would be the subdomain that needs to be authenticated. How do I authenticate the emails? Basically, I first need to go into the application, create a new domain record with the, which generates dynamics, uh, dynamics mark. It's going to generate me the keys that I need to use. I need to generate a use Joe's keys, and then I'm going to be able to pick them up and put them into my DNS configuration by creating a new TXT record using the value of the ownership, and then create two CNAME records with a DKIM authentication key. How does that look in practice? Now in Dynamics Marketing, I'm going to be able to navigate to my settings area and go into my domain authentication. As indicated, I have an already authenticated domain, which is the one that comes out of the box. I now can add my custom domain. And once I define whether I can be using it for email sending or also for phone hosting, more information on this is available online and I'll then save it. When I do, it's going to generate for me the necessary ownership authentication key and necessary DICM keys that I can use for confirming my DNS configuration. With this information, I'm going to go off and manage my DNS records. I'm going to pick up the value and for my domain, icarasa.com, I'm going to create a new TXT record, which is what the, the dynamics marketing is going to look for when Equity is trying to confirm that I've been the owner of this domain. I then will also add a couple of CNAME records. First one is going to be using the key for the first for the primary domain for TKIM authentication. And I'm going to add it as a CNAME alias and pick the value associated with that key. I'm going to repeat the process to, uh, and to start with the second key. This secondary key is really used as a backup should the first key fail to authenticate during a particular email marketing campaign. Once those changes are done, uh, DNS uh, will take some time to validate and propagate across the world. But what I'm going to be able to do is click on my confirmation button within domain and see if that's actually completed. Once I do, I can see that the, it'll give me a notification that it's complete and I need to refresh to understand how far along the process I am. At this point, streaming as keys not found because it hasn't yet propagated shortly. After a few moments, I've been waiting for the confirmation to occur. When I click refresh, I can see that my domain is now confirmed for both from the ownership perspective and to be able to use on emails. What this allows me to now do is go into my emails and if I wanted to say send a particular email from any domain, let's say I wanted to try emmanuel at somewhere.com this will tell me that this will tell me that the form address is from an authenticated domain. However, if I wanted to now use the domain I have just validated and do the same check for errors. I can see that the, the, the warning goes away. This now concludes the demonstration and all the discussion around domain authentication. For further information, you can take a look at the, at the documentation available on the website.